Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, D.T., from Weather Risk here in Central Virginia, doing our uh, weekly weather report. I am the captain of chaos, coronal confusion, and the commander of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather, special edition here, this Friday night to early Saturday morning, May 19th, May 20th. And uh, this special edition, we'll be looking at the Memorial Day holiday weekend forecast, the first big one of the summer season. Uh, there are some interesting problems developing, uh, possibly from portions of the southeast U.S., the mid-Atlantic, maybe close to New England. On the other hand, areas west of the Appalachian Mountains look really good on the Ohio Valley and <coughs> the Tennessee Valley. So let's get right to it. <coughs> Excuse me. First, we're going to take a look here at the uh, June forecast from CPC. And I actually happen to agree with this. I think this is correct. Uh, look, G June looks pretty close to normal. The precipitation a little above normal in the drought areas of the plains, which is really nice to see. And uh, in the mid-Atlantic, east, east of the Mississippi River, uh, near normal temperatures. There, uh, uh, um, this is their uh, summer forecast. You can see June, July, and August, and they're quite wet east of the Mississippi River. This is classic moderate to strong El Nino summer. I think this is correct. I've been talking about this since late March, early April. I think that's what's going to happen. I think we're headed for a moderate or strong El Nino. Here's the latest values, Australians and the Climate Prediction Center. You can see the different areas of values. And so 1.2, that's the coast off of South America, uh, well above 2 degrees centigrade. And so 3 3.4 are warming rapidly. So, uh, yeah, we are headed for a strong El Nino in my view. Now, I could be wrong. It may end up being a borderline moderate strong, but I think it's going to end up being quite strong. Another area to take a look at is the subsurface readings here. And you can see that where, where the black arrow is, that's plus 4 degrees centigrade. That is plus 5. So you hear this is 5.5 degrees centigrade above normal. This is Enso Region 1.2, which is the area right off the coast of Peru. So that's where it's really the warmest. And this is this is the fastest transition we've ever had from La Nina to El Nino. The temperature is just exploding. And you can see the transition going on here. Uh, uh, posted this slide other places before but you can see this black line here is where we are in the 2023 uh, Enso region 1.2 and you can see it's much warmer than any of these other El Nino events down here that we've seen the rapid turnover. Another way of looking at it is the current sea surface temperature map. This is as of May 17th. We have area A which is the negative PDO which is rapidly weakening now and you have the Enso developing and the warm waters in the eastern Atlantic. Again, some people have argued that the negative PDO was going to last until the summer. This is bullshit. People making that argument are idiots. And you can clearly see that the negative PDO, which could, if it, if it were to last into the summer, if that happens, it would act to counter the El Nino. And it's also better for the hurricane season in terms of, in terms of activity. You get more activity in the Atlantic base when the, negative, when the PDO is negative. But like I said, that's bullshit. Let me show you why. Here's the latest sea surface temperature map. Now, this map here, if we take a look at area A, we enlarge it right here. Let's just blow this one up so you can see it a little bit. Uh, there you go. So you're going to see this area. You, just, you can see how much the, the cold water here has really fallen apart over the past couple of weeks. And the warm water is rapidly advancing to the east. And if we look at the temperature change in the last 14 days, look at this. You can see here how, how amazingly uh, warm uh, the eastern Pacific has turned in the last... 14 days. Okay, meanwhile, the really warm water, which was in the Central Pacific here, right, in Area A, look what's happened. That's now cooling off rapidly. So this is a, a big deal here. This is going to be a big deal. There's no doubt about that. So uh, the, the, the PDO is falling apart, so this is going to El Nino summer. And you can see other projections here. Briefly, this is the CFS. And you can see that, you know, by now, this is the one of more conservative models here. The Australians are warmer, faster, but by uh, September, October, we're 1.5 to 2 degrees centigrade above normal. So there you go. OK, uh, what's going to happen here in the next couple of days here? So this here is the overall general pattern. You can see we have this very strong ridge here in Western Canada where the heat's been very pronounced for May. And this, of course, when you get a this is a negative, this is a positive P&A pattern, positive P&A trough here on the East Coast. Now, if this is winter, this would be an Arctic outbreak, all right? But this is a dry pattern for the Midwest here, no, for the most part. You've got a cold front, which is going to be coming through here uh, this weekend, and then you get high pressure. The ridge begins to build in across the Midwest, and it's very, and it's very nice. Look, here's the cold front. Not a big deal. 
okay, moves through the, you know, the ECB, the Eastern Corn Belt, the Western Corn Belt areas, uh, and then into the uh, Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic, boom, there you go, off the coast. And so by the time you get to like uh, Sunday night, Monday, Sunday, Monday, look at this enormous high, nearly 1030 millibars, very strong for this time of year, dominating the weather from the Dakotas and Kansas all the way off the Cape Cod coast. Just unbelievably nice conditions early next week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, spectacular weather. Everybody, east of the Mississippi River, have fun, enjoy yourselves. Low humidity, lots of sunshine, no rain. Okay, now, what happens is now we get to the middle of Wednesday. So we have the second front coming southward here, and we have this high-pressure area now stretching from Maine all the way down to Virginia. And the front is down this way. So again, this is Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday. Look at the, no rain, everything from the Plain States all the way off the coast, just you don't normally see high pressure like this. It's really nice, just, you know, really nice weather. Okay, now, here's things get the problem. Um, I talked about this in the newsletter, okay? For those of you that don't get the three-week newsletter, you should, because I talked about this last week. I said, I, last week I said, I think the um, more of the weekend is going to be nice in the East Coast and the Mid-Atlantic, but I'm not certain because there's some uncertainty about an upper-level low. Now, here, this is what I'm talking about. Now, this is... Oh, May 18th. So this is um, a Thursday. And here's the European model, the operational European model. Now the upper low is over Florida. You see that? And you can see this big ridge here. See the black line, the thin black line, enormous ridge here supporting the high pressure. This keeps the upper low to the south. And this is Saturday, May 27th. So all the showers and storms are restricted to Florida and the Gulf Coast. Nothing comes north into Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio. Nothing. The high ridge stays that way. This looks good. This is a nice, great, perfect Memorial Day weekend in the Mid-Atlantic, the Ohio Valley, New England, everybody. Gulf Coast, not so much. Okay. Now, here's the problem. This is now the 12Z. This is uh, Friday's midday European. Now, there's the upper low forming over Florida. There's a little in the trough right along the east coast. Here's the ridge. You see how the ridge is building? So the ridge is building up this way, and it causes the upper low to close off over Florida. Now, initially, again, this is Thursday. Okay, this is Wednesday, and this is Thursday's map. Look at this gargantuan high. Holy mackerel, 1036 millibars in late May in north of the Great Lakes in western, southwest Quebec. And you can see, now northeast winds, the low pressure area is well off the coast on the operational run. This looks like it's going to keep everything to the south. All right? That's what it initially looks like. It's going to keep everything. The high is just gargantuan. It's huge. And the coastal low is forced off the coast. That's great. That looks like a nice, really nice Memorial Day weekend. Okay. <clears throat> the problem is that when you're, and this is now Friday. Okay? So there's the upper low. Now, the upper lows are getting a little far north here. It's almost due east of Savannah, Georgia. So there's the trough and the upper low. You can see it. Now, here's the ridge building northward. So this builds the high pressure here, and the upper low is off the Florida coast. So there's going to be a very sharp line in here somewhere where the rain will go only so far north, and then it will stop. Maybe it'll be north of the Virginia-North Carolina border. Maybe it'll be up by Pennsylvania, the Trent Pennsylvania Turnpike. Somewhere in the Mid-Atlantic, there's going to be an area where the rain will go only so far north, and then it will stop. Okay. Now, if you're west of the Appalachian Mountains, look at the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes. Spectacular Memorial Day weekend. Have fun. Enjoy yourselves. No problems. Lots of sunshine. No serious heat. Low humidity. Knock yourself out. Okay. Um, here. Now, the problem is that what happens is this upper low jumps for some reason. I can't quite figure out, but the Europeans doing it. It turns it inland. And, as, and it turns it to the northwest instead of going out to sea. I'm not sure why it's doing this on the 12Z run. Okay. Now, remember earlier, it had, had it staying well, well off the coast. So now it's not doing that now. So this comes inland. And let, let me show you what I mean. Look at this. See how it turns inland into West Virginia and Roanoke and Blacksburg? And now, if this upper low is here, even though the surface map has the rain off the coast, that's wrong. If this is right, you're going to have a lot more rain on the coast. The highs over Montreal, you're going to have east winds, you're going to rain along the coast. West of the Appalachians, nothing. It'll be sunny, it'll be dry. Right along the coast, you'll have rain and more showers. This is underdone. So let me show you what I mean here. So let me send this uh, backwards. There we go. If, this is, if the upper area map here is right, you're going to get a lot more rain along the coast here. Again, west of the Appalachians, all this will be sunny. But 
so we'll see so I'm little, I, I think this is wrong um, in other words what I'm saying here is um, let's drink this map this does not match this this does not match this something is wrong here in the European okay now from here you can see what it does is it takes it up off the coast and you get some rain in New England and New Jersey and New York and Delmarva so Virginia North Carolina they see a little bit not much Pennsylvania that's fine okay so it's got the rain in, in New England and New York and New Jersey a little bit and this would be um, if I'm not mistaken this would be uh, uh, Sunday night Monday Sunday night and Monday okay not a big deal and then um, but if you look at the European ensemble okay this is Friday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. There's the closed low and surface low. There's a nice trough. The ridge is building in from Texas all the way into, into Quebec, Canada. And what happens is the upper low begins to come north. See how it's see where you see the Bahamas right here? Now look where it is. See how it's coming north? Uh, that's not good. That would drive more moisture into the Mid-Atlantic. Indeed, the European ensemble has some rain along the, the coastal Carolina, Southeast Virginia. Now, this is 72 hours ending. So this is May 26th to May 29th. Not, yet, okay, over a three-day period. This is not a lot of rain. This is some rain, okay? Some sunshine, some rain, not a washout. It's a little wet along the uh, coast here a little bit, but even there, it's not a washout. It's a, it's a problem. It's a hassle, but it's not a problem. Now, meanwhile, like I mentioned, here's the Appalachian Mountains. Look how dry it is in the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. So right along the coast, Boston all the way down to Savannah, Georgia, right along the coast. That's what the Europeans indicating. So again, it's not perfect, but it's not horrible. All right, let's look at the GFS. Now the GFS, this is the 12Z run from today on this Friday, midday. Now you can see by Friday night, beginning of the Memorial Day weekend, it's got a closed up below over all the Southeast states with a centered here over the Florida Panhandle. By the time we get to Sunday, for Monday night, the upper lows moved from Florida Panhandle to the South Car North Carolina coast, and this, if, which would drive the rain into the Mid-Atlantic region. If this low is going to go up this far north, it's going to take the rain with it. And sure enough, we can see that. Here we go. Now this is Thursday, big high pressure. Everybody's sunny and dry, but there's the low forming off the Bahamas. Now, if this was July or August, this could become a tropical system, maybe a tropical cyclone, but it's not. And then it comes inland. Now, this is Friday at 2 p.m. Look at the heavy rain in Virginia. Let me blow this up here a little bit on the GFS so you can see it. Bring this front. Look at that. Wow. That looks really bad. But this is the 12Z GFS, all right? This is for Friday. And then... The rain continues a little bit. This is Saturday afternoon. It's not quite as heavy, but there's still a lot of rain in the Carolinas, Virginia, getting into Maryland, portions of Pennsylvania. And this is Sunday. The upper low is inland. You're getting southeast winds, east winds from off the ocean, feeding the moisture, and then you have showers up and down. This is not steady rain. This is showers for Sunday and Monday, May 27th, May 28th. Okay? And then maybe into Memorial Day. And then finally, um, I guess this is Memorial Day itself. You can see again, 2 o'clock Monday, scattered showers, not steady rain, scattered showers. New England, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, you know, not a washout, but a problem. Now, if you look at the total rainfall, this is the 12Z GFS. This is, again, three days ending as of Monday afternoon. That brown stuff is six inch rains in the mountains of the Shenandoah. Everybody else is getting like one to three inch rains here from Philadelphia down to Charlotte, from uh, Hillsville and Southwest Virginia all the way to Salisbury, Maryland. Now this is a really wet looking map. This is not what you want to see, okay? But the 18Z GFS is different. Look what it does. The rain is much more scattered, much more, not nearly as, as heavy. See this? This is sun, This is uh, Saturday, this is um, Sunday. You can see that, the, again, the, the rain is not that big of a deal here. And the main difference is that the upper low on the European, I mean, on the GFS at 18Z is here over the southern states and it stays further south longer. So it doesn't, you know, it takes longer to turn, come off the coast. By the time it begins to come off the coast, it's Monday. So again, you get some rain here out of it, not a big deal. And sure enough, there's a difference. Look at the rainfall map. So this was 12Z. That's really bad for North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware. Okay, that's bad. But this is the 18Z. 
not as wet not as bad it's it's fairly wet north carolina and southern virginia but central and northern virginia is not bad pennsylvania is dry maryland is dry most of delaware looks okay again this is a three-day time frame all of memorial day weekend the 27th 28th 29th and all the heavy stuff is down in georgia and south carolina because the upper low takes longer to come off the coast that makes sense okay and finally what happens after this okay it's 11 to 50 day map here's the european and you can see at 300 hours and 360 hours nice big ridge here here's the pacific jet coming in there's a trough on the west coast of north america uh, and the ridge this jet energy split so one goes over the ridge the other one comes south you end up a nice trough here on the east coast see that very nice trough on the east coast well that trough means more high pressure cold fronts coming through not a lot of rain very nice canadian high pressure systems no real heat right through the first week of june so there you go all right well that was the presentation i hope you enjoyed it uh this is meteorologist dt from weather risk i'll see you over on the twitter page and over on the website and of course the facebook page thanks for watching